Hello, it's me, and um, I've got another buy request, and that's this very interesting 3x3 modification over here, which I think is called the Blade Cube. Um, now, as you can see, it's a 3x3 it's a modification, which means it's in three layers. Top layer here, middle layer here, and bottom layer over here. And it has very interesting shape to it. Um, now, what I'd like to do in this particular tutorial is I like to go about this a slightly different way. From time to time I'll get questions and requests regarding various modifications, various cubes, and also various questions on tutorials that I've done to be to clarify certain aspects of that. Now what I've noticed about some of the questions is they all follow a similar pattern, which is some questions regarding how to deal with mods. Now I've done a lot of mod tutorials, modification tutorials, and really the, the system is the same. I solve it like a super cube. Truth be told, there are many people out there who get a puzzle, like this say. They may have solved a three by three, have no idea what a super cube is. So what do I mean by a super cube in order to solve this? Well, you all know, I assume, how to solve a three by three. This is your standard three by three Rubik's cube over here. Um, what it is, is every piece has a specific um, place where it needs to go, and it's um, shown by the center. Now, one thing that you'll notice is that the colors are solid colors on each face, which means that this center can actually be rotated. And you wouldn't know, and you wouldn't care, because there is no difference between this center being like this, or this center being rotated, and there's various algorithms. I can rotate the center by 90 degrees, rotate this by 180 degrees, but it doesn't really matter. If you think that there's only one solution to the Rubik's Cube, you're actually incorrect. There's a variety of different solutions, but you wouldn't know the difference, because if this is rotated by 90 degrees, um, it looks exactly the same. So there's plenty of ver plenty of solutions to this that are different. What a super cube is, is a super cube basically takes that aspect out of it and says, no, there's one configuration, one solution, which means I have to find a way to make this orientation matter. And that would be a situation like this. So basically what a super cube is, is where they specify the rotation. Because if I had it, say, this rotated by 180 degrees or 90 degrees, you may say that, well, this is the red side and it's on the red top, which is correct. But you would know that this is not solved correctly because this blue would be, this blue stripe would be here when it should be matching up with this blue stripe and matching up with this side over here as well. So that's my whole point, that you have more specificity in your solution with a super cube purely based on the fact that you have pictures or designs that have a very specific orientation, whereas you wouldn't here. So in this, there's a bunch of different possible solutions and you wouldn't know the difference. With this, there's only one. What that means in terms of solving is it means you have to apply a little bit more strategy in terms of how to, um, how to, how to solve this. Now, in, in upcoming episodes, I'm going to have a Back to Basics series where I talk about certain aspects of what these algorithms mean, including the concept of parity. But I'm just going to mention one thing about parity. Um, now, three by threes, when you think about that, you think about that as not having parity. It actually does, because the strictest definition of parity just tells you the characteristics of something being odd or being even. So this has parity. This is an odd numbered puzzle. This is an odd layered puzzle. But what you don't get is a parity problem. By parity problem, I mean you can solve this like a standard Rubik's Cube and you won't end up in impossible situations where the number of algorithms couldn't get you, um, couldn't bring you home basically. So that's all I'm going to say about parity except for the fact that this does not demonstrate parity. Not a 3x3, three three, not a 3x3 three three super cube, not a 3x3 three three modification either. So bear that in mind. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this super cube as an example of how to solve these modifications. Now why are mods like super cubes? Well the reason why they're like super cubes is because orientation means something. This can only be oriented a specific way. When you get a 3x3 three three modification or any puzzle, first see if it is a 3x3, three three, which this one is. You see three layers here, and you see three layers over here. Once you've decided that this is really this in octahedron or blade clothing, then understand that this has a specific orientation and try to identify what's the equivalent of a center, an edge, and a corner. In this particular case, here's one layer over here. So this is your center. This is actually your center. This is pulled up from a cube form into here. 
And so to here, I'm just going to move this here, and I find that this is the center over here. So this is the center. Now this center looks less like this center and more like this. And the reason for that is because, as you can see, this has a very specific orientation. It's not one solid color that doesn't care what these edges are doing. And that's also because each of these edges, some of them have um, two different colors. Some of them have a specific shape. Either way you put it, orientation has meaning. So that's what I mean about a supercube in that orientation has meaning. Same thing with this. This has four colors on it, just like this. So I hope you gather my meaning that this becomes just like a supercube. The other reason why it's like that, even if these were solid colors, orientation also has meaning because of the variable shapes. The shapes of all these um, edges, rather, all these edges are exactly the same. The shapes of all these corners are exactly the same. So that's not what guides me, and as a matter of fact, these are, this is one solid color, and the shapes are pretty much the same. Over here, the shapes are different. The shape of this edge and this edge are the same. It's one solid color all the way across. The shapes of this are different, and it's two colors. If you have differing shapes, then once again, orientation has meaning, but it has kind of an extra meaning. So, when going through this, understand that this is a 3x3 three three with specific center orientation, which makes it basically a supercube. Now, I'm going to very quickly go through a supercube solve. Again, I assume understanding of how to solve a 3x3. Three three. I'm going through the same algorithms. My method is a layer-by-layer layer method. It's how I've always done it. And we're just going to go through regarding how to do that with, um, with a supercube. We're going to do that in tandem with, with these puzzles over here. So what I'm going to do is, you know, when you scramble this, you never lose your cube shape. It does not shape shift. Instead, what's happening is you're really just taking everything out of alignment here. Pocus, pocus. Okay, so this whole thing is scrambled. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and scramble this as well, because, again, this is a supercube. Before I do that, let's kind of study what we're talking about. The definition of an edge is something that joins or articulates two centers. So this is an edge, and this is an edge, because it's joining two centers. So this is an edge, 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 edge. So when I get my cross, these are going to be in over here. In terms of corners, corners join three um, centers, basically, or they, yeah, they, they join three centers. So this would be a corner because you can see it joining this to this to this. So this is the corner of a side, this is a corner, this is a corner, and this is a corner. So the structure is the same, which means the solve is the same. So what I'm going to do is just basically go through a scramble of this over here. Now that you've kind of identified it, now watch as you're scrambling it, all modifications, well not all modifications, but many modifications shape shift. And that's because you're taking asymmetric shapes out of the picture. Now there's something else that I should point out. With some of the um, corners, they're one color and they're a symmetric shape, which means I could rotate this and it would look exactly the same. Others aren't like that, so anyway, we're going to scramble this here, speed through that, abracadabra. Okay, and it's scrambled. I also scrambled this one here too, so that um, we can make that work. Okay, so the first step that I would do as doing a layer by layer is we pick a side. Um, so go ahead and pick a side. Uh, we're going to have to orient ourselves with a center. I'm going to orient myself with this center. Now the thing about the shape shifting of a modification, even though it's shape shifted, all of my pieces are in the right relative position. What I mean by that is edges are where edges are supposed to be. They're not where this particular edge is supposed to be, but you can see edge, 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 corner, 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 corner. So we've retained that situation. Just like here, and same thing over here. In this case, this is not a shape-shifting modification. And that's because of the symmetric shape of the entire puzzle. So the first step, as we navigate our way through this, um, and I'm going to use this as reference, is let's say we find a center, and I'm going to use the green one over here. So the first step would be to put in our cross. By cross, what I mean is edge placement. So I'm looking to put in the edges in the proper place in the proper configuration. Um, now what you could do if you want is you could orient the centers appropriately. You can choose to do that now if you want. Here's the green stripe here. So this is going to be oriented like this. Green is up. 
the screen is up over here. Now this is probably a review for much of you, but again, this is a little experiment uh, to see if I can do this without making any assumptions about seeing previous tutorials or knowing what the heck I'm talking about. So anyway, this is oriented appropriate. Well, no, there. No, this is oriented appropriately. You could do the same thing with these centers. So this, I'm gonna say, is a center. What I'm gonna do is, again, with this center here, I'm gonna put all of my yellows so that they're coordinated with these other centers. And I'm gonna put all of my reds so that they're coordinated together. So red, red, red. And I'm gonna make sure that the greens um, are oriented, well, this green is oriented with this. I'm just gonna turn this over here. All I'm doing is the same thing I did here, orienting my centers. In this case, the same colors have to be sort of defining a quote false side. Understand, this is the actual side that we're, that we're talking about. So, so all of my centers appear to be oriented. Once I've done that, I'm gonna get my cross. Now if I'm gonna define this as my first side, my cross means I'm gonna place my edges appropriately. Now understand, with a mod we have to skew our perspective. So let's take a look at what this means on a super cube. Uh, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for over here, green and yellow. So where's green and yellow? Green and yellow is right here. Now with just a normal cube like this, all I'd have to do is turn this in here, double turn, and we're good. See, green and yellow. But we couldn't quite do it that way because we ended up turning the center and got it out of alignment. So this blue is facing up when it should be green facing up. So the only thing that we have to do to protect against that step is I have to move this side down where the green matches the green and then move it up. Otherwise, it's gonna be matching the blue here, green and blue. So I'm gonna just double turn this down, move this in so that these are matching, and then turn it up, okay? So pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but you've got to keep that in mind if you're going to navigate your way through these modifications. Let's do another one uh, just for illustration. Here's another green. This is green and brown. So it belongs here, green and brown. The brown is over here. I'm going to turn it down here. Now instead of being able to just turn it here and move it up, I have to put the green in to correlate with this. So let's move it out of the way. Double turn this down with a 2F. And now move it in to accept it and I'll bring it up. So it just means I have, to, I have to do a 2F first, move it in and then bring it up to match these two. So to here, let's just proceed the same way we would with a Rubik's Cube. Put the green one on the bottom, so turn it down, down, across. This is gonna match up to over here. I have to put this green stripe on the bottom, put it here, here to match it up, then move it in. So you can see we're working on our cross with the specific orientation. So finally, green and white. Green and white is over here. We've got to move that to the bottom. So I'm just going to move this up here so that I can put the green to the bottom, move it out of the way, and then be sure to move this back. <clears throat> so now that this is down here, move this to the white. But of course, before we do that, this green has to match with this green over here. So orientation means something. Move this here and move it up. So basically what I have is I have the proper cross with the proper orientation. I'm going to translate that now to this puzzle over here. So I'm going to try to get the cross. The first thing that I want to do then is I want to find the proper um, edge that goes into here, that goes between this. Well, this edge over here, I was defining green and white, right? Well, this one, this is green and green. So it's got to be an edge that's just green and green, so it's one solid green color. So I look around for that piece, and here it is. And so, too, I have to make sure that this is the equivalent to the bottom side here. Don't lose your perspective. So normally you think, oh, turn this here and then turn it up twice. One, two. The problem is, yeah, the orientation is completely wrong. This is not orientated appropriately with this, nor is it orientated appropriately with this. So let's move that back down here. So what we're going to have to do is the same thing that we did with this cube here. Move it out of the way. Double turn this down so that this can match up. So one, two, and then we move it in. Now, in this particular modification, that's not gonna work because you see this is put in, um, this is put in wrong, upside down. So if I put it in like this, yeah, I got the solid green, but look, that's skewed wrong. That could be one of two reasons. Number one, 
there's another green one that's oriented right, or number two, we have to move this in order to become oriented appropriately. So this is where this strays from this a little bit because you have a specific shape. It's not just one cube shape. So let's move this back down here. Put the center back in for the purposes of orienting ourselves. Now let's move this around. We have to actually turn this upside down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this like this. And now if I move this up, you can see this green one fits flush with this green over here. So I just did a little bit of rearranging. It's kind of done intuitively. Now that this fits flush, I can now put this up. So now this fits fine. We're still working on this layer here. We're just working on our cross. This is just a fancy version of what I did here about turning this center so that it matches this proper cube and then turning it up. So let's do it again with this side. So I see yellow on yellow. But with this particular edge, notice there are two colors that are spanning this particular edge. So what I'm looking for is an edge that has both yellow and green to combine with these. So that's going to be this over here, both yellow and green. So we're going to try to move it in to the side. Now as you can see, it's already here, but it's not oriented correctly with this side. Just like over here, when this was like this, I can't just move it here and move it up. I had to move this center here to line it up appropriately and then move it up. That's exactly what I'm going to do here. So although this is attached to this, I can't just double turn it and move it up. It's exactly the same concept. Color is wrong, orientation is wrong. So what I'm going to do is once again do the same thing. Um, move it out of the way. And now I'm going to try to move it in conjunction with this center in, in the appropriate way. So this orange and green, this orange is going to come up to here and match this color here, which I don't want to be green. I want to be, I keep saying orange, don't I? yellow. So we're going to turn the yellow here of this center. And now I can move this up so that it matches this. Once I've done that, I can now take this and move this into this center over here, just like that. Now I have to move this back. All right, so the end result is now we have this edge that's in. So let's practice on this side as well. I see two colors here, red and yellow, red and yellow. So I'm looking for a red and yellow one, which is right over here. So this is in the top layer, but it's in the wrong place at the top layer. It's in the wrong place of the cross. So let's just move it down, one, two, Again, keeping our cube perspective, move it out. I'm just gonna go one, two, to move this back so that I don't lose perspective here. Right like this. So how can we do this? Well, I want this red and yellow to match right over here, this red and yellow over here. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm gonna double turn this center does this match? Nope, it doesn't match over here. So what I'm gonna to have to do is put it in a slightly different way. So let's move this up, and maybe we can move it in from here. And there it is. So this matches over here, and now we can move it into its proper place on the cross. Now we move this down, so we have to move this back up. So the end result is we have these, the equivalent again of these over here. So these are in. Now we're going to intuitively place this. I see a thick red and a thick red. It's one color between the two. It's not this one. That one color is red, so there must be a large red one right over here. So this one has to line up with here. You can see that this is already articulating with this center. Remember, this is our side. Let's not lose perspective. That's the biggest problem you guys are probably running into if you're not quite getting it. Um, so I, I can't just move this up. So what I'm going to do is move this down to the bottom layer here, this bottom layer, just kind of move it out of the way. Now I'm going to move this red in conjunction with this red part of this center so that I can move it into here. So one, two. Okay, how does this look over here if I move it here? That doesn't look so good. <clears throat> move it here. How does that look? Nope, not lined up. So what I'm going to have to do is let's move this back here. Let's move this up from this direction. And you can see this fits flush. And now we just move it up to the first layer center that we're talking about, right over here, so that's in. Remember, we move this down, so we have to move this back up. The end result is we have our cross.
Here's our cross. In other words, we pretty much did this situation over here. 